Hello and welcome to Thought Provoking Tech. I'm Zach and in today's video, I'm gonna be looking at how big of a role the CPU plays in terms of our game performance for cloud gaming. So recently, Shadow went through a CPU upgrade and when they announced that CPU upgrade, I ran a handful of benchmarks, some of those synthetic and one of those a built-in benchmark to a game and recorded those results. Recently, I've re-ran those exact same benchmarks with the new Shadow CPU upgrade to compare the before and after performance of the Shadow platform in terms of what we should be able to expect in the future from games now that we have a better CPU with a higher base clock frequency and how big of an impact that upgrade actually had. So guys, without further delay, let's go ahead and jump right to it. So let's go ahead and kick off this video with our synthetic benchmarks and today we have Unigen Superposition and Cinebench. I also had originally ran a benchmark with 3D Mark, but lately I've not been able to get 3D Mark to run. That's part of the reason why this video is so delayed because I tried and tried again to get 3D Mark to work and eventually gave up after a series of weeks. So I tried things like reinstalling and things like that and have had zero luck getting it to work. I think Shadow actually might be actively blocking you from running it because every time I tried running it instantly, the benchmark doesn't even really have a chance to kick off. Instantly, the machine restarts. Um, so it could be Shadow trying to prevent you from running it because they do have shared infrastructure, which means that everybody has a, their own dedicated GPU, but you do share certain components such as the CPU. So running these intensive benchmarks will, could definitely have a negative impact on the other users of your system. So with that being said, I wasn't able to run 3D Mark and essentially just gave up on it. So I'm just gonna go with Unigen and Cinebench for this part of the video. So with Unigen, before the upgrade, we had a score of 9,192. After the score, we had a, after the upgrade, we had a score of 9,953, which translates into an 8% increase. So a pretty healthy increase there. Uh, definitely not nothing to scoff at and definitely w outside of our margin of error, you know, if you had a one, a one or two percent increase, I did run these tests multiple times and these are on average, but it could still be within the margin of error, uh, just, you know, day to day fluctuation for some reason or another. Beyond that, we had Cinebench, which before had a score of 375 and after a score of 509, this was a very massive increase. It was the biggest increase I saw with a with translated into a 36% increase. Now, Cinebench is going to be a better representation of what you would get, what kind of performance increase you'd get if you're like rendering videos on channels. So if you use it to edit videos on top of gaming, because a lot of us with gaming computers, we game on them, but they're also still very powerful computers. So they're good for things like video editing, even high-end photo editing with very large resolution photos, uh, possibly even game design, um, you know, 3D CAD, things like that. So I did run Cinebench just because not everybody just uses their system just for gaming. And I think like if you're going to do video editing or rendering a 3D scene, you're going to see a very good increase with the new uh, CPU upgrade. Next up, we have our game benchmark, which is Ashes of Singularity using the built-in benchmark. This benchmark is actually pretty cool because it's, for one, it's consistent, but it also runs multiple different batches with an increasing number of units for each batch. So this might actually simulate matches where a lot of times in strategy games, your first couple of clashes are smaller with less units. And then towards the end of the games, you end up with big armies clashing. So I think this is a very good benchmark, a solid benchmark. And I chose Astros of Singularity because generally speaking, strategy games seem to be very CPU heavy uh, type games, uh, strategy games in general seem to be CPU heavy games. So I thought it would be a good showcase of if the CPU grade is gonna do much for gaming performance and give a good representation of that um, for, for a general use case. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and cover our average first. So the average FPS from all the different runs was 40.2 before, after it's 41.3. Not a huge upgrade, this translates to a 2.7% upgrade. Uh, decent, but not huge, not spectacular, not as big as I was hoping for. Our normal batches, which is a small batch of units we're fighting, uh, we had before we had 49.5 and after we had 49.5. So no increase at all. Now the next benchmark is a medium benchmark. So they had a bit even bigger group of units fighting. And this one is kind of interesting. So before we had 44.4, 44 
FPS and after we had 42.1. So we actually saw a decrease. So this translates to a 5.1% decrease in our performance. I have no way to explain that. Um, the benchmark seems to be pretty consistent. So it's not like they send the same units, or at least from what I could tell every single time, the same number of units for a medium batch. So it's really hard to explain why we got that big drop um, beyond just who knows. Um, finally, we have our heavy batches. So before we had 31.3, you definitely start seeing that all the units start heavily impacting our FPS. After we had 34.9, so this translated into 11.5% overall increase. So a very good increase, but also on medium batches, we also saw a pretty heavy decrease of negative five. So it kind of up and down there. Overall, though, we did see that 2.7% increase. So a decent increase, but not a spectacular increase. So going from there, I didn't have a lot of games that I tested Shadow before. I had certain games like Players Unknown Battlegrounds, but that game is still heavily in development and it's being patched all the time. So if I compared the performance before and after, it, it probably wouldn't be fair at all because the game hopefully has had some improvements. It seems like it plays better um, and those could simply be attributed to kind of fine tuning the game engine and the game in general, not really due to the CPU upgrade. So that being said, I do have one final section, which is a comparison between Shadow and Paper Space. Both of those have a tier that has the P5000 graphics card. So the exact same graphic card, graphics card, but the primary difference between the two is the CPU. Of course, they have probably different RAM and different motherboard, but the primary hardware difference between these two is the CPU. So I want to look at those two, and this might be a trend I do or maybe a quarterly to compare the two. Uh, and have like kind of have this as an ongoing series to see with the exact same GPU how big of an impact the CPU and other hardware in the machine actually plays. So in this final segment of the video, I'm not going to compare Shadow before and after the CPU upgrade. Instead, I'm going to look at Shadow versus Paper Space because Paper Space actually has a hardware tier that has the exact same GPU, the P5000. That, that Shadow is using, but I saw very different performance from these two different machines. And actually when looking at Paper Space, I ran their P4000 and their P5000 hardware tiers, whereas the P4000 is essentially equivalent to a GTX 1070, the P5000 is essentially equivalent to a GTX 1080, so the P5000 should perform better. But I also, found, but when testing Paper Space, I found out that the P4000 actually performed just as good and every once in a while, it actually performed a little bit better, which was quite puzzling to me and actually reminded me of this video that I've had in the backlog where comparing the CPU upgrade of Shadow before and after and if that CPU upgrade actually meant a lot and what kind of impact it had on our gaming. So when I compared the P5000 hardware tier paper space versus Shadow, you have the exact same GPU. The main difference is the CPU. Of course, the memory might be at different clock frequencies. You might have a different motherboard. So there are other factors that it, this isn't a perfect comparison, but the big difference between these two setups is Shadow has a better CPU with a higher base clock frequency. So in terms of minimum FPS on Shadow, we got 64. On Paper Space, we have 45.7. This translates into a massive 40% increase for Shadow versus Paper Space. And I think that there shows that having a high base clock frequency, especially for certain games, is going to have a massive impact. And that's kind of why I think this might be an ongoing series. Every once in a while, I might aggregate, you know, the performance results of a games that I've done in my benchmarks and kind of do maybe a quarterly update to this video on, and compare how big of an impact it seems that the CPU is actually having on our performance of Shadow versus the Paper Space P5000, simply because we have a perfect test case where they have the exact same GPU and the primary difference is the CPU. So moving on from there, we have the maximum. I usually don't usually don't look at the max FPS too much, but on uh, Shadow, we had a 128.7. On Paper Space, we had a 118. Not a huge difference. This translates to a 9.1% increase. Still good nonetheless, uh, but the max is usually a spike and I don't take it into account too heavily. I primarily look at the minimum and our average. So speaking of average, on average, on Shadow, we had 88.3, whereas on Paper Space, we had 77.3. So this translates into a 14.2% increase. So all that together, Shadow definitely performed every single time better, but in the two most important factors 
our minimum FPS and our average, it actually improved the most with a massive 40% on the minimum side. And I think that is quite important because it definitely is hinting at, or at least it, and to me, it, it is hinting at that the fact that at least Call of Duty, because it isn't as graphically demanding because I am playing multiplayer, which I usually tone back to graphics a little bit um, to make it you know, more uh, consistent be between computers. They're not usually as open. You know, you have smaller maps and things like that that, that come into factor. But since Call of Duty is such a focused game, I think it definitely does show that the CPU is starting to become a limiting factor for cloud gaming. And cloud gaming providers need to definitely take that into account. And Shadow did uh, when they did their CPU upgrade. Now, Paperspace is more a generic cloud computing platform, uh, a smaller version of what you would get with Microsoft's Azure or Amazon's AWS. So keeping that in mind, they're probably not ever going to make systems tailor-made for gaming, which might illustrate why platforms like Shadow or GeForce Now might actually be a better solution if you're primary goal is just to utilize the system for cloud gaming. Whereas if you on paper space, you might be using it for a lot of different things uh, because you get more RAM with paper space. Uh, if I remember correctly, qu quite a bit increase in RAM. So it might be better for a video editing or 3D CAD or something along those lines if you want to use your system for dual purposes. So that being said, I just, I just thought this video co concept was interesting when I was benchmarking Call of Duty. It reminded me of this video that I've had in my backlog and I definitely just thought it was a perfect time to produce this video. So hopefully you found this video informative. Hopefully you found it interesting and keep an eye out and definitely leave uh, comments in the section below if you are looking forward to maybe a quarterly update or maybe just a periodic update in general to this video to compare games that I've benchmarked in the last segment of time, whether that be you know two months, three months or whatever I end up doing uh, to see if this trend continues or if Call of Duty was just a weird outlier because we didn't notice near the increase with Ashes of Singularity. So it could be something else that Shadow is doing. You know, they did do a CPU upgrade, but maybe it's something else. Maybe they're running RAM that's adding a little bit too. You know, maybe the RAM is higher frequency and that might be contributing a little bit too. Um, but it could simply be that Call of Duty is a better example of the CPU bottlenecks for certain types of games. So with that being said, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. I greatly appreciate that. Also, if you're not already an existing subscriber, make sure to smash that subscribe button to stay tuned for more great videos from Thought Provoking Tech. Thanks for watching, you guys. And until next time, Zach out.